My name is Matias, I'm from Argentina, but I'm gonna speak in English. I'm more comfortable than speaking in Portuguese. But I'm gonna speak slowly, so that the lady behind me can translate easily. Uh, I work for MKIT Argentina, and I'm gonna show you a simple technique uh, I came up together about backdooring X11. Who here knows what X11 is? Okay, cool. It has many names, but the, the most standard thing I think is X11. <clears throat> so back in 1995, I have an idea. I'm sure I'm not the only one that had an, uh, this idea, but I had it, I was 11, and I thought it was a good idea to lock a computer using hardware. Uh, I'm gonna rush it because we're running late, so I'm gonna um, do, a, I'm not gonna talk fast so they can translate, but I'm gonna be faster in my talk overall. So uh, an easy way to lock a computer using hardware, I was imagining a couple of Hollywood movies and what it would be like if you were at a bar or at a Starbucks or whatever and you were using your computer, the computer was unlocked and that would be the most vulnerable moment of your experience, right? Because if you lock your computer, I'm sure you have this encryption and protection for the operating system, so that's okay. But what if some, someone steals your computer while it is unlocked? That's a bit of a, of a problem. So, a simple way to lock the computer user using only a simple USB drive that is connected to the, uh, to the uh, computer and also tied to your wrist or whatever, and if something or someone takes your computer away from you, the USB will unplug and then the computer will lock. Simple thing. So it's only two steps. Find a way to read the device, and then two, find a way to lock the computer. For the step number one, I thought about how am I going to use the USB device? Am I going, am I going to read a file inside the file system? And then I thought, no, because you could copy, you could, uh, it, it wouldn't connect the same way on every computer. It would have to depend on the operating system and whether if other devices are connected before it, it would assign a different number or different partition to the USB device. So I went ahead to the uh, universal ID, which carry, it's carried by the device. So there are only two steps to creating this application, which is a simple Python script of less than 10 lines. You check the uh, slash dev slash disk slash by ID and you enroll your USB through that and then you just check each uh, 10 times a second whether it is connected or not. So if I do this, <clears throat> here I have all the information of my currently connected devices. So I don't have the USB connected, and the last one is SDA4, and when I connect my device, and I give it a minute. Here is SDB1, and the ID is USB Kingston Data Traveler, blah, 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 and a serial number, which wouldn't be able to copy, and you wouldn't be able to know which ID belongs to this specific uh, USB drive. This is carried with the device. So all I have to do is just check whether or not this uh, uh, assigned file is connected, if it, if it exists or not, and if it not, just lock the computer. And you can just do something stupid like uh, play an alarm or something, uh, so when the device is disconnected, just the computer locks in and blah, blah, blah. Even if I have the, the USB drive off and I put the correct password, it will lock again, because it will unlock, but then uh, again, in less than a, in a second, it's gonna check again, it's gonna check that it's not connected, and then it's not gonna work. This will only work with this uh, USB drive because of the ID, the universal ID that is given to this device. So that's that. I was 11, I was happy. But then I thought, ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> What's the step number two? The step number one is locating a device. Doing this, enrolling the device, and checking if it's present. But what about uh, the other step? 
locking the computer? How can I uh, simply lock the computer using an OS function and not an external application or whatever? And what I found is Dbus. Who here knows what Dbus is? OK. Did you know about this, the, the, the feature on Dbus about locking the computer? Cool, great. You can leave. Um, after this, I was 11, I was happy, and then I, th and then I thought, uh, how can I use this for other advantages? So for you who don't know what Divas is, it's an IPC software. It provides uh, communication between applications. It handles most of the hardware and software interruptions. So if you take Divas out, you will lose maybe wireless, maybe network communications, maybe accessing some devices. You will lose a lot of... Uh, important hardware communication because it's bundled, it's, it's inside the operating system. It doesn't come with every operating system, but in the operating system that it comes with, it, uh, it plays an important uh, feature. It runs with privileges. It speaks directly to the kernel, so if you can speak to the bus, the bus will speak to the kernel with privileges for you. And it comes bundled in KDE, KDE Genome, Free Desktop, and XF, uh, whatever you say that in English. Uh, so if you have, which one of you has one of these uh, display managers right now? Okay, nobody raised the hand. I'm not going to do anything to you, don't worry, I promise. <laughs> so after this, I thought, um, what if I can unlock a computer using the same method? I mean, we know Dbus, among other things, can lock a computer, but can it unlock a computer using the same method. So I thought about what, how could I do that? How could I unlock a computer uh, using the same technique? So it's, again, two steps. One is to find a way to unlock the computer, and two is a way to trigger that unlock. There has to be a way for you to, um, at will, say to the computer, hey, you unlock yourself. So. For the step number one, again, I used Dbus. I didn't have to find anything else because Dbus offered me everything that I, uh, that, that I needed to do to do this. So the step number two is the most important part of this. Um, the trigger has to be something intelligent. If you start uh, looking for keystrokes in, in your application, you might be misconstrued as a keylogger. If you start opening up ports to start to, to trigger the unlock, you might also be uh, elected as suspicious activity. So for me, the best way I thought to trigger the unlock was to use hardware. So what kind of, which hardware changes do you think, think right now as a sysadmin or as a computer user or whatever, what kind or which uh, hardware changes can be invoked while the computer is unlocked? That's a question for you. USB, you connect the USB. You can connect the USB and it will pop up a new device. Uh, background, yeah, of course, in the background, the computer is locked in the background. Okay, isn't that a little uh, invasive? Could be a little invasive. I mean, it's easy to, 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 de uh, to detect. If you're running antivirus, IDS, or whatever, you can detect this kind of behavior. Somebody is unplugging plug a new USB device. What's going on? It's, uh, it's fishy. It's uh, suspicious. What other kind of hardware change do you think you can be invoked while, while the computer is unlocked and the computer has to be able to respond to it? You can try it right now if you have your laptops on with you right now. You can try to, you can, uh, try to lower the brightness. You can try to lower, mute the, uh, the speakers. Uh, the computer shouldn't respond because you're trying to change the behavior of a computer that is locked. So it shouldn't respond to that. Anyone has an idea? What? Again? I can't understand. The a keyboard. Oh, okay, the power. Perfect. The, the power is one, one that I thought also. Another one? How, how so? How the keyboard? The keyboard can be easily uh, be thought about as, as a keylogger. 
the network cable. Okay, the network again. Okay, hold on. Let's go step by step. If we do the keyboard, you're a keylogger. That's it. You can be reading keystrokes uh, in the background without sounding suspicious. So keyboard soft. The same for mouse coordinates, like putting the mouse in different parts of the screen, it's off because it can be uh, easily misconstrued as a keylogger. Uh, about the network, the network can be easily disabled from the user, from the assistant mean, so that it's not automatic. But you could also check for changes, but not, for, let's say, for instance, I connect my own computer or my own router and I give a specific IP address to the computer and that triggers the unlock. It has to be undetectable, it has to be not suspicious, and it has to work with the computer unlocked. That is a good idea. I thought about three, the three most basic. One is the screen brightness. How can I adjust the screen brightness when the computer is unlocked? If I put the keyboard, in, not, not in X11, think X11. I don't know about Mac or whatever, but X11 doesn't respond to that. But I can just close the lid. And if I close the computer, the brightness will go to zero. And now I'm invoking a hardware change which is undetectable and it's responding with the computer locked. The other one is the power input. The power input can be, do, can be done with the computer unlocked and the computer will detect the change, <clears throat> will detect the change and notify the operating system while the computer is unlocked. But that can be risky because if you're trying to do that to a computer and the battery is uh, dead or something and you power the power input, you t take it off and the computer dies. So that's it. This encryption won't let you advance any longer. So the simplest way that I found, which is, I mean, I don't think anyone detects audio output and it works and the computer checks it and it notifies the US and it's, I'm not saying it's undetectable, but I'm saying it's the least detectable of all. It's the audio output. So playing with the audio jack is, uh, was very, very fun. The detection of whether the plug is connected or not, it's not electronic, it's mechanic. When you put the plug inside the, the jack, it mechanically closes the circuit. It doesn't, it's not important if the computer is locked or not. The computer doesn't have, the operating system doesn't have to the jack closes the circuit and that's it. But it notifies the operating system. Why? The operating system and the hardware has to stop sending music to the speakers because it has to start sending it to the audio jack. Because that's what happens when you connect the, uh, the headphones. So the operating system and the hardware have to do something and they have to operate and uh, listen to what I'm saying even if the computer is unlocked. See, so uh, I connect the headphones and there's a change. The operating system is notified and let's be honest, who checks that? Is there someone here who works in an AV company or an IDS company that can say they check those hardware changes? I'm not, I'm not sure they do. But if you do, if someone knows, whether if I, can, I have my headphones connected or not, it's a very uh, unusual thing to, to check, but it works. So, two steps. I have to read that file which has the information of the sound card and parse the exact part of the file that handles the headphones, the headphone connection, and then check for changes, which is pretty simple. I'm gonna do a demo, and here's the warning, playing with the audio jack can damage it. I damaged my computer making this, uh, this POC because I played with it so many times that now it fails sometimes. And now sometimes I have the headphones on and it starts the speaker uh, or it mutes all of a sudden, so be careful with that. So the file, the file, It's huge. It has a lot of information regarding all uh, the, the status of the, uh, of the uh, audio card. It has about volume, it has about the equalizer, 
It has about the mixer inside, which connects to the, uh, uh, to the software inside Linux. Um, and in some part, has the information about the headphones. So I created a simple parser that only thing it does is checks the, uh, the part of the file that has the information about the headphones. So I'm gonna connect it. Did you see the difference? This. This says 040 when it's out and 00 when it's in. So the computer has, I mean the operating system has knowledge of whether the uh, circuit is closed or not. So I can do that and trigger the unlock with that, which is very simple. So again, small problem. What if the victim wants to use the headphones? I can't use a trigger to unlock the computer when the headphones are on and if the user, the victim, locks the computer while using the headphones, the computer screen will never lock. So the simple solution is to create a pattern. And it's very simple. Set checks each one second, like zero, one, 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 zero. Like zero is out, one is in. And take that information and store it somewhere in RAM or whatever. So every check each one second. So replicate that with the headphones and if the, what you do with the headphones matches the uh, pattern that you set up on your, on your back door, trigger the unlock. Everybody's following me? Okay. So this is quite simple. I'm going to try to raise my computer without unplugging the VGA. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to lock my computer. And then I'm just going to... Use this is a typical iPhone headphone, and I'm just gonna connect it to the audio jack, and I'm gonna do disconnected, connected, 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 disconnected. So zero, one, 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 zero, and it didn't work. <laughs> zero, one, 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 zero, and it and it worked. So what I'm doing here is uh, by just using the, uh, the headphone detection in the correct pattern that it's hidden and known only by me, I can trigger the unlock without being detected and profit and whatever. So, a couple of questions for the aftertaste. How can we mitigate this? How can we stop this? Well, you can remove Divas, but I don't recommend it because you will take a, a very important part of your computer. You can't. Yeah, of course, you can't. Yep. yep. So you can disable screen lock, which is uncomfortable, but so far is the easiest way to avoid this problem. I had a friend who I was testing this with, and he he has Debian with Genome 2, and he didn't have the unlock. He did, doesn't believe in screensavers or whatever. So he, he, each time he wanted to get away from the computer, he just log off. So I couldn't exploit it with him because it, it works with that. So I'm sure if you leave this room and within the hour, you will be able to replicate this. So um, you can disable the screen lock, and that will get you an uncomfortable computer, but a safe one. Can it be persistent? Of course, you can add it to the RC local and just two or three simple lines of Python and that's it. If your hands are quick, you can do it to a victim computer in no time. Can you do it to root? Yes. But technically you can't because by default, root doesn't have enabled the screen lock or the screensaver. If you log into your X session with, you know, with the user root and you try to lock the screen, you won't be able to. It's disabled by default. So technically, technically, yes, you can do it to root, such as you could do it to any other user, but it won't work in the real world because the user root doesn't have the screen lock activated. But it can work. It's not something that the user is uh, safe from this. 
So if you have a crazy root user who likes to enable the screensaver and then leave the computer unattended, you may be able to do, do it, uh, to do it to him. Can you do it on Windows? Yes. There's a project called WinDivas, which is from the actual Divas project. We, you, you, you can install it on Windows, but you can also use any of the other IPC connection software that has Windows, like COM, RPC, or DDE, and you can try to do the same with that. I would go with COM. I would go there. That's the easiest way to do it. And I, finally, can you shell shock it? Hell yeah, you can do it. However, there's another uh, warning here. It's going to be unlikely for you to find a, a server that is logged in and but locked, but has a CGI or an SMTP or whatever running on the, uh, on the outside. It's gonna be unlikely for you to find it, but if you find it, you can shell shock it. And I have a simple test. I have a virtual machine here, and uh, I'm, I'm not gonna do it CGI, I'm just gonna SSH into it. So let's first check that this is uh, vulnerable to shell shock. Yeah, it's vulnerable. So now I'm going to check this out. Echo, import device, not display. I mean, it's a simple thing of importing the Python script and executing it. But you can shell shock it the hell out of it. And I can, as you can see, the computer is locked. And when I run the uh, Shellshock software with all that, and I hit enter, the screen locks. So you can Shellshock it remotely if the server is vulnerable. But if you find a server that is locked and has CGI or whatever running, you can do it. If you find it, please send me an email or whatever. Let's laugh together at it. So that's it. I was uh, in a rush because we are running late. So anybody has any questions? Yeah. I would suggest that maybe you should use something like VLock to lock all your yeah. larger screens. Like yeah, you would uh, overrule VLock. It doesn't matter if you use VLock. I don't usually use, I don't actually use VLock. I created my own software, which is a uh, uh, it, it doesn't use the user password, it uses your own personal password that you put inside. It asks for a temporary password, and then it locks all the, uh, your TTIs, TTYs. It's not uh, VLOG. VLOG uses the, the user password. This way you can share a terminal with a friend and you, can, you don't have to give him your own, uh, your own uh, user password. But even if you use VLOCK, when you use this, since it's calling X, and X is more important than the terminal because X runs in a smaller ring than the terminal, you bypass it. Any other question? I'm sure that if you go to the computer within the hour, you will be able to replicate this. This is very simple. It's not a hard uh, finding. It's the putting together that counts. The, uh, using the headphone and the calling the divas, which is in all those X uh, managers that I told you about, that's the, the magic of it. It's not, it's not hard. You will be able to replicate with no problem. But if you don't, you want to send me an email, that's my information. You can email me and whatever. So thank you.